Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Jesus said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the twelve went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. As we enjoy the lovely weather we're having for this summer, so typical, but we also remember that so many other places in the world are spending their summertime as well. And I bring that up just because this is a time in the Mediterranean area where the seas are calmer and many more people are traveling. And it's also something the Holy Father has asked all the parishes across Italy to pray for today. And I just join our prayers with them, but it's to pray for all those refugees and displaced souls that are coming across from Africa and they've lost something like, I thought I was gonna check before I came in, but thousands have drowned this summer and it happens every year. And it's just something that we don't see too often in the newspapers, but just a tragedy that continues to happen with the movement of peoples from all over, especially coming from Africa and across the Mediterranean to Spain and to Southern Italy. And it's something the Holy Father has asked all the parishes to keep in mind of the masses today. And for us, it's good for us just to join our prayers to them as well, because it's so important for us just to keep our hearts open to so many sufferings that we know of throughout the world and to join our hearts with them in communion with the suffering that takes place and to recognize how fortunate we are with so many blessings we have, even in the midst of the difficulties and troubles that we have and experience ourselves. Today we begin a reading of the letter to the Ephesians, and it's the first little bit of the letter, and I bring that up because we'll be reading it for seven straight Sundays in a row, right till almost the end of August. And it's not a very long letter, and so it's worthwhile for us just to find the scriptures at home and to take our time reading through it again. We'll be reading excerpts from it. We won't read the whole part of it at Mass, but it's a letter that Paul addresses to the people of Ephesus, and to walk through it, it's rich in many, many deep spiritual ideas and speaks of the mission of Christ, which is many place what we'll speak of today. But it's well worth for us to read the whole thing in context and to see how it plays itself out in the readings that we have. And they fit lovely with the, with the gospel we have today as well as the gospel for next week. And so I just invite you to do that. And as we begin that, Jesus. Paul speaks to the people, especially in the form of the letter, and he addresses them formally at the beginning, and then he begins a hymn to the mystery of God the Father and the mission that Christ has. And I'm just going to read just a little wee bit of it, just to see one aspect of it, just to hold for ourselves today. We've been blessed in Christ. We have been chosen in Christ. We have sonship through Christ. We are praised in the beloved in Christ and redemption in Christ. And God lavishes all these things in this wisdom set forth in the mystery of Christ himself in the fullness of time. And that's just some of the phrases that are there. It's very, very Christocentric. Everything goes through Christ and everything is Christ and the Father's will and everything that he has and every benefit and grace that we receive come through Christ himself. And it echoes in many ways that reading we have, those words that are in John's Gospel when the apostles ask him where he's going, and he says to them, don't you, we've been with together all this time, and don't you realize 
I am the way and the truth and the life. And this is an exposition and a development of that idea of everything comes through Christ and all the blessings that we received. It's almost like a funnel in which all the things that God spoke of in prophets and in the writings of the Old Testament get funneled down through the person of Christ born of the Virgin. And for ourselves, all of our experiences, everything in our life, everything that gives us humanity and gives us eternal life goes through one person, Christ himself. And it gives a centrality to everything that Christ does. And in that sense, then just see what takes place in the gospel. Jesus calls the twelve. Jesus sends out the twelve two by two. Jesus gives them authority over unclean spirits. And Jesus speaks to them about how they are to travel. And next week he calls them back again when they return and say, let us find a place of rest so we can reflect on what has taken place. Everything centers on Christ. And for ourselves, as Christians and as Catholics, Christ is the center of our lives and the person, regardless even in our marriage and the relationships we have, who is still central in everything that we do in our lives. It's a wonderful focus for us. It's something we speak of every Sunday and in every prayer that we have. But it's good for us to see and reflect on this mystery that Jesus gives to us, especially through the words of Paul, of the beginning of this hymn, which I just invite you to read again, to see this mystery of how the Father has given a plan to the world for all of us in our salvation. Jesus sends out, first calls the twelve, and then sends them out two by two, and tells them how to go and what to do, and he gives them authority over unclean spirits. And this for the church is a wonderful reminder of its nature, of the fact that God calls them, Jesus calls them, and Jesus sends them out. And also that Jesus gives a power to the church, a power over unclean spirits, and a power for the forgiveness of sins, which is so dear to us, and the power to make himself present in the gathering of the community on the first day of the week that marks the rising of the Jesus from the dead. And this is a power that goes out of itself, something Pope Francis has spoken of so importantly. The church cannot remain within itself. It must go outside itself and be sent out by Christ. But before it gets sent out, a lesson for all of us today which we've spoken about, but is something within ourselves. In Matthew's Gospel, in the fifth chapter, just after the giving of the Beatitudes, the Pharisees and those who see Jesus with his disciples remark that none of them are cleaning their hands or anything like that before they eat. They're not doing the rituals which make themselves clean. And Jesus calms them down and says, it's not something from the exterior that makes man unclean. It's the things that come from the recesses of his heart. And we know this ourselves, but it's so important for us to be reminded of this mystery that Jesus teaches, what the nature of human beings are themselves. It is the things that come from the recesses of the heart that make us impure. Envy, anger, fornication, spirit of murder, all the things that come from within and well within, which are part of that state of original sin, which is all of our condition. And we're not responsible for them coming up out of us. They're there naturally, not naturally, but they're there because of the state in which we live. But the key for us is to combat them immediately. Thoughts of envy, thoughts of anger, thoughts of whatever come to mind for us. This becomes the battlefield of our spiritual lives, which every one of us, with the help of others, with the grace of the sacraments, is the part of the life that every one of us lives. And as Jesus sends the church out into the world with a power over unclean spirits, he sends every one of us first into the recesses of our hearts with the power that overcomes the evil spirits within us. And this is the exercise of the power within us in our baptism that Christ is, gives to us, which is the power of the resurrection. And to live that as every one of us does, but to focus on the importance and the nobility of that fight. When something arises within our hearts, to address it immediately and place Christ there with us, to destroy the thoughts and to refocus those thoughts to the beauty of what our lives are, 
the patience, the enduring suffering, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are given to us to exercise and to live our lives. And before the church goes out, it sends each individual into the depths of our own souls to begin that battle. And we know how often that takes place during the day and how much that grace is needed for us. But we also know that power. We know that it works. We know that Christ who goes there into that place is able to dampen down those thoughts and those passions and those rising things from the within us that make us impure and to allow Christ to reign there. And with the help of the sacraments and the grace of the sacraments, Christ makes that for us. Christ doesn't give us the power to forgive our own sins. I need to go to a priest to go to confession, but he does give me this power over unclean spirits within myself by the very nature of my baptism to be able to go there and to continue that struggle and that eternal vigilance that's necessary as we look and see these things that go up in our hearts. The other is, if I know I'm placing myself in, we use the term, a position of sin or an occasion of sin or a place that drives these passions forth within us, those are the places to be avoided. Those are the places where we don't need to go and we need to prepare ourselves even before that takes place to know what's taking place. Find the places of peace. Find the thoughts of peace. Find the people who build us up, don't tear us down. Find the things that ennoble us as human beings. Find the things where Christ is present, giving his graces for us. And when we're strengthened, then we can go to the places that are difficult. When we're strengthened, then we can be sent out. And with that strength from within ourselves in Christ's presence, he goes out with the fruits that we will see next week when the disciples return to Jesus and tell him of all the marvelous things that have taken place. By your life, 